Another important aspect is your folder structure. Once you have your names specified, then you need to um, work out how you're going to keep these files in a folder structure. So, um, so folder structures are used for organising your data. They should be should have a clear documented naming convention. You should have a top level folder or directory that should include the project title or a unique identifier or, or a date. Folders within the substructure should be divided by common themes. But there is no right way or wrong way. It's, it's, it's whatever you decide it's going to be. And the decision needs to be made within the project and and you must be able to stick with that, with the agreed structure. It must be stable, it must be scalable, and it must be consistent. Many research projects are going to result in a lot of files, many, many data files. Um, and you need to be able to store your original data, you need to be able to store your process data, and you need to be able to store your products. And it's a good idea to separate these. So you have a, a, a top level folder for original data, another folder for process data, another one for products. So you know where to go to look for the, for the different types of data. So it's good to come up with a standard folder structure to store all of your research data and, and stick with that, that standard structure. So the structure should be hierarchical with uh, high level broad topics and more specific folders um, underneath these. So you can name the folder after a project or, or a research issue and you need to use folder names that uh, uniquely define, uh, describe your files and don't use um, names that are meaningless or have only a meaning to you. They don't call your files Greg or Bill or something like that because you know what it means but nobody else does. So this is an example that we've come up with um, the Ocean Teacher um, data management training. We've developed a standard folder structure which we use within our training. So this is an example that you can, you can look at and, and um, um, use if you like. It's, it's just a um, it's a good way of, of storing um, oceanographic data. So what you've got at the top here is the name of the project. That's the top level. Underneath that we have three folders. One for data, one for metadata, and one for products. So within those, those um, folders we have under data we have base maps. Now in this particular case we're creating a a, uh, a product. So we have base maps, we have data which um, may be the geographic borders, we have some sediment data and we have some bathymetry data. So we're, we're creating folders called borders, geology and relief. And because the oceanographic data is, is probably the most important, we're keeping that in a separate folder because we may have a lot more of that data. So in this case, we have data which is coming from the World Ocean Database. We're having data from the World Ocean Atlas, so we're giving those two separate uh, folders. And you may have data from other sources, and you create folders under that uh, in that same structure. For the metadata, you want you may want to create uh, metadata records within the folder structure, um, so you keep those in a um, separate. Um, folder. And the third folder is for products. See, the, when you're with your original data, you'll work on that and you'll create products. And you want to keep those pr products separate. Now, what I've done here is that I've created folders under products for the software that I'm using to create those products. So I've created a product for example, using integrated data viewer, IDV, so everything I product I create with IDV, I keep in that folder. Another example is Ocean Data View, if anybody's familiar with that. 
So I have a folder called Ocean Data View, and under there I, I have some subfolders for uh, collections, for images, for interpolations, whatever I'm working on, the products that I'm working on, I'll create separate folders. And once again, here's a, another example here of different software that I'm using, and I will create a folder, and under, the, under that, the different types of products. So that's just a, an example of a, a folder structure. And obviously, for your projects, you'll have different types of data, and you'll need to come up with a suitable structure. But just keep it in, in, a, in a way that it's easy to find the data, and you'll keep the data separated from the products. 